Hi, I'm Brad Blackman with Digital Office Equipment and I'm here to show you how to remove jams and to troubleshoot your copiers. Uh, you have basically two models in the school system. One is a model that looks like this and then you have another model that is uh, much bigger that's about a 60 page per minute machine and an 80 page per minute machine. The first thing in using the copy machine is you want to put your originals face up in the document feeder. You have two tabs over here on both sides of the um, document feeder that you don't want to put paper above these guides. There's also a line right there. That holds about 175 sheets of paper. Anything that you have more than 175 sheets of paper, what you're going to want to do is just put half the stack in here and then choose an option from the control panel that will be um, continuous scan. That will allow you to put your next set of papers and scan those in. You never want to be up here putting paper in and trying to catch it to slide the next set of paper in there before it feeds out. Use the continuous scan function. If you get a jam in the machine, this lid right here lifts up. You can see the document as it would flow right through the document uh, feeder on top here. And then once it makes a turn right through here, it comes out a little crack right here. It then makes an immediate turn and goes through a crack right here. So if the machine jams in the document feeder, of course you'll see the paper right here. If you don't see the paper right here, it might be because it's bent going out and back in um, to the machine. Now if it's going back into the machine and you can't see it to pull out this way, you can lift up this lid right here and you'll see your paper right down here. And then you can also access your paper right up under here, you'll see it. Two more important things about the document feeder. When you're using the document feeder and you have your papers loaded right here, there's a sensor over here on the right hand side. That registers the machine to let the machine know that there's a large sheet of paper in here. So if you're like me, and you put a letter sheet of paper in the machine and you've got some other documents that you're about to make a copy of, it's going to want to put this on a big sheet of paper for you and it's not going to come out right because it thinks it's a big sheet of paper up there. So don't lay your extra paper here, lay your extra paper here. One more thing about the document feeder that's uh, noteworthy. If you ever get a black line that goes down your copies after using the document feeder, 99.9% .9 of the time, something is on this little glass right here. Not the big glass, but the little glass to the side. The reason why is if you're copying something that has white out, white out gets stuck here. If you've ever copied something that has a sign here note, some of that sticky residue gets stuck here and then it collects dirt. As I stated earlier, your image comes out this little crack back in that crack. So the only place that image scans is this little small glass right here. If something's stuck on that little glass, it reads that white out the whole time your image goes by it and it says, hey, you have a black line on your copy, so I'm going to draw you a black line on your copy. So if you ever get black lines, make sure that this glass is clean right here. You can rub it with your finger, you can scratch it with your fingernail. I would suggest scratching it with your fingernail because rubbing it with your finger a lot of times won't get the, um, the stickiness up. When you scratch it with your fingernail, all of a sudden you'll feel like, oh, there was something there that I couldn't even see. Another trick to finding where that uh, thing is stuck on this glass is to lay your copy right here. Wherever that black line went down your image, that is where something's stuck on the glass over here. You do have a pad behind the machine here, and it's missing, so that means one of your fellow teachers that has eyeglasses has stole it from the machine. Um, go steal it out of her room now. <laughs> uh, you can use tissue, you can use alcohol, you can use a number of different things to clean this. And one last thing to make sure that if your original, uh, it, to find out if there's something on this glass, if you're making a copy and a black line shows up, when using the document feeder. Lay your original right here. And if you make a copy and that black line doesn't show up, then without 100% positive, positivity, there's something on this glass right here because it used this glass to scan your original this time. You can lay your originals up this way or this way, it doesn't matter.
The next most important thing with the machine is loading paper in the tray. It's very crucial that you load paper in the tray correctly. Having the paper loaded in the tray incorrectly from the beginning is going to cause your machine to jam. So, pulling out the paper trays right here, you'll see that there's a guide here and a guide here. These guides need to be snug against the paper, which this tray is snug. Let's say you walked up here and this guide was back here. And a lot of times I've seen them where they're tilted where it kind of looks like it's snug against the paper. That's going to cause jams. The reason why is when that paper is running in the machine, it has room to slide back and forth in the paper tray. Up under here, there's a little rubber roller that picks up your paper right here on this edge. If that paper slides back far enough this way, and that rubber roller has no area to grab that paper, you're going to get a jam. So make sure that that paper is snug against this uh, back guide. Also important on these side guides too. If this side guide is right here, what's going to happen is the paper is going to shift right to left. Now that's not going to cause as many jams as this one, but it will cause your image not to show up square on the sheet of paper up here. Your image might be shifted to the right or shifted to the left because the paper started going in at this angle instead of right in the middle where it expected it to be. One other important thing when loading the paper, I've seen tons of people that will grab the paper like this and I'm going to kind of sabotage this one uh, just for kicks and giggles. But you get a ream of paper and you stick it down like that. Now if you notice, well, I sabotaged it a little bit too much. <laughs> you notice though that one sheet of paper down here, just one sheet of paper is not lined up with the rest of the paper. That caused it not to go down correctly in the paper tray which is eventually going to cause jams in the copy machine. It might not cause a jam for your first two copies, but before it gets to that sheet of paper, or when it gets to that sheet of paper, it's going to cause the machine to jam. So loading paper in the paper trays is one of the most critical components of making sure your copier works well. Uh, you can load your paper in the paper trays like this, or you can load your paper in the paper trays like this. However, if you'll notice, it's very convenient to stick paper over here on the right-hand side. That's a no-no. You only want to load paper on the left-hand side of this paper tray. The reason why is there is a metal bracket here that raises up. It raises the paper to that little rubber roller we were talking about that feeds the paper through the machine. If you have paper over here, there's too much weight on this bracket to raise the paper, and it doesn't come up all the way, and it jams. So make sure you only load paper on this side of the paper tray. Yes. Alright, All right. and it will lock into place when you get to standard size sheets of paper. So you can't have it out here in an intermediate size. It will lock in when it finds that letter size paper. So you have a paper tray here, you have a paper tray here, same rules apply to the second paper tray as the first paper tray, and then you have a third paper tray here. This is your large capacity paper tray. In this paper tray, it is okay to have paper on both sides. You can load three reams of paper over here and three reams of paper on this side. It'll load up no higher than this line right here. If you load too much paper in there, it will cause the machine to malfunction. It will disable this tray until we can come up to re-able this tray. So make sure you only put three reams of paper on both sides, which is 1,500 sheets, 1,500 sheets, a total of 3,000. I'll just leave some in the paper tray. Same rules apply with making sure that your paper goes down nice and neat in these trays. Uh, you don't want that bottom sheet of paper to be out a little bit because it causes the paper not to lay properly in the paper trays. All right. Um, moving over here to the right side of the copy machine, you have your bypass tray. 
that's where you're going to feed anything that's out of the norm when it comes to paper. If you're running um, transparencies, if you're running cardstock, if you're running any kind of uh, rough paper or something other than bond, you're going to want to put it in the bypass tray. It's got heavier duty or rollers meant to pick up different weights of paper. Now, out of the paper tray, you can run a 67 pound cardstock out of it. So it can handle heavier paper than bonds. So if you've just gone up a step or two, it's fine to throw in the regular tray. It's when you jump up to the thick papers you want to put in the bypass tray. Over here to the left is your finisher. This is where the paper comes out of the machine and then it goes through the finishing process. Whether you're hole punching a document, whether you're stapling a document, or you just want to sort your documents from left to right. In here, you will see that um, it's nice and compact in here, but you have a D5 lever. That, there's a little handle back here that you push and it just slides out. This brings any jam that was in the machine out to you. This D6 lever will open up, allowing you access to your paper. Your paper would be right here if the machine jammed in the finisher. Loading staples in this machine. Um, forgive me for one second because they change them on every machine. This one is... We'll get to staples in a second. I'll find them. Um, if your machine shows that your hole punch unit is full, this is the container for your hole punches. This just slides out, you can dump it in the trash, and then it slides back in, just like this. If you really want to make somebody mad, stick it above their door so when they open it up, it just falls on top of them. These other levers in here, your E2, your D2, and your E1. Your two E's, you're not going to want to mess with unless it's your paper is rolling when it comes out. I don't know if y'all have ever seen it happen, but depending on if there's how much moisture's in the paper, instead of the paper coming out flat, it could come out in a nice little roll. These are de-rolling rollers. Basically it forces the paper to bend back the other way so it'll come out flat. We typically mess with these to help you out. This D2 will advance the paper for you. If it were stuck before it got into this unit or if it was stuck up here and you can't quite get it to it, just roll D2 in a um, counterclockwise position to roll your paper out. The, uh, I remember where the staples are now. <laughs> uh, to get to the finisher, this button pushes in and it rolls away from the machine. This gives you access a little bit more to the finisher where you have a door here and you have a door here. Both of these are jam access doors if your paper's coming in the top tray B. You also have a little guide in here that you can pull up, D1 that helps you get access to paper here. This, if your paper's jammed in here, this is where you're gonna wanna use the roller to help you access that paper and get it out of there. The staples on this one are behind this door right here, D8. You open this up and here is your staple cartridge. It just slides straight down and then you will see your cartridges. You, the new one you'll get, you never want to throw away this blue piece and this um, clear piece, not clear piece, but a um, white piece right here. You never want to throw that away. When you're getting new staples, the only thing you get is this clear box on top. So when your staples are empty and you can see that there's staples in there, you can squeeze this and it pops straight up. Your new staple cartridge will look just like this and you just push it straight down and then you've loaded your staples into the machine. If you ever get jams while stapling, where you're wanting to staple a document and it's not stapling, this is where you come to see if a staple's jammed in the unit. 
right behind this uh, metal guide right here, this green tab, you can pick up. And if there's a staple jammed, it will look like that. You'll see it where it was bent up right here, these last two. Just pull those last two that were bent up that didn't go in paper off and then push this guide back down. Now you're ready to staple documents again. It slides right back up in a, um, your A slot and you're ready to go. There is a D7 right here, but it doesn't allow you much access to paper, but that is an additional place that you can look. That's it as far as the finisher. Now on the copy machine, you have a, you've got three access doors over here. This bottom access door is only if it jams out of your large capacity paper deck right here. This access door is whether it jams out of your paper tray one or paper tray two. And you'll see the paper, it'll be right here. One of the key things to removing paper out of the machine is if the paper's jammed here and you're standing in front of the machine, you don't want to grab the paper and pull to you. When you grab that paper and pull to you, it's leaving a corner in the machine that's odds are going to rip off. And then you're not going to be able to see it. You're going to close that door and it's either going to one, tell you there's a jam, or two, it's not going to tell you a jam, but it's going to cause every sheet that goes through the machine after that to jam. You always want to pull the paper the same angle that it was coming. Pull it straight up, not to you. You also have a door access over here that comes down. This gives you access to the inside components of the machine. This is where all the expensive parts are on the machine. This uh, orange or red roller up here is very hot. Don't touch unless you want to commit a crime because it'll get rid of your fingertips. So be careful of the papers up here. Right below that is the drum. You'll see a drum cover, this black piece. That covers the drum so that it doesn't get scratched. However, some um, people have very big diamond rings. I know y'all have got some four and five carat rings here. If you go into machine and that ring scratches this black drum right here, every document that comes out of the machine from there on out will have a scratch, a black scratch on your paper. So you want to make sure that you don't scratch the drum that's behind this. Otherwise, you can pull your paper straight out of any of the um, areas that it might be jammed. This is if you're running single copies. If it jams back here, you are running duplex copies. That's it as far as um, digging in the machine for jams. This just rolls back into place on the machine and it'll stop beeping when it's uh, back on and ready to go. Uh, let's see. Inside this panel right here is where you replace the toner and the uh, waste toner. This is your toner cartridge. There's a little blue tab that you push up and it just slides out. This, I believe we provided some recycle bins. If you don't have a recycle bin, get somebody to call our office and we'll uh, drop ship you one up here. Goes in a recycle bin, you contact uh, somebody in the front office, you should always have spares on hand. You shake it from left to right before you put it in the machine to make sure there's no clumps in here. And you just slide it back in. Over here is your waste toner cartridge. One of these comes with every toner. So when you replace the toner, you just pull back on this. There'll be a uh, tab right here that you can, or a piece of tape that you can pull off and stick over there so you don't get dirty. That goes in the trash. A new one will come looking just like this that you just pop back on in the machine. You'll notice we have one more area to remove the jam. The only time that you would need to access this is if it jams out of the bypass tray. Otherwise, the paper never comes through this area. This just pulls out right here, and you can lift it up, or you can roll it out. As far as um, 
the machine and anything else that you might run into encounter a problem with. This power button, if you come up and you think the machine's off and you can't use it, look for the green light in the top right corner. That means the machine is powered on and it is ready to go. You just need to bring it out of a sleep mode by hitting this power button. However, if there is not a green button over here, that means somebody's turned it off with the hard key. The hard key is located right here on the right hand side behind this little panel. And you just switch it off and it goes off. And it comes back on. I believe that is the quick rundown of this machine um, as far as removing jam accesses and um, the do's and don'ts of what you should do with the machine.